we are continuing our discussion on different experimental techniques. In the last lecture, we looked at Moire. Now, in this lecture, we will look at brittle coatings. Earlier, we have looked at the method of strain gauges. Strain gauges is able to find out strain at a particular location. Suppose, I have a known situation, I know these are all the regions of stress concentration, I can put a strain gauge and find out the strain comfortably. Suppose, I have a large industrial problem and the component is so huge and you have a no clue on how to go about and find out and get started on the problem. So, in such cases brittle coating is a first step and the name itself signifies in this a thin coat of material that fails in a brittle fashion is sprayed onto the specimen. So, the name indicates you have a brittle coating. So, you put a thin spray of material which fails in a brittle fashion. A brittle material fails by what theory? What is the theory of failure for a brittle material? It fails by maximum stress theory or maximum strain theory and you can call it as Morse theory whichever way you want to call it. Okay. So, once it fails it you are able to get the principal stress direction from that. So, here what you do is you have a specimen on which you spray the material, you load the model and allow the coating to crack a very peculiar. Okay. And here the accuracy of the technique will be decided by the property of the coating. If the coating fails at a lower value of strain, lot more better because I can even measure strains at lower levels. So, that is the principle behind it. And even the experiment is conducted in a slightly different fashion here. See in other cases what you do is I want to find out strain for a given load. I will go and apply that load and find out what are the contours that I got and try to interpret. On the other hand, brittle coating is done in a different fashion. What you do is you take the model, you load it in steps and at the end of each step, I have to go and look at where all cracks are formed, go and carefully inspect it, mark them, they all carry meaning. Okay. And you see that for a pressure vessel, I have a pressure vessel here and what we will see is you have a, the pressure vessel is made of steel that is what the grey colour shows and this slight uh, brownish tinge light brown shows the area sprayed with brittle coating. Now, what I am going to do is I am going to increase the pressure inside the pressure vessel and what you find here is. I have first set of cracks formed. I notice that first set of cracks are formed and I indicate the level of pressure by an arrow and this pressure will keep on increasing. So, what I do is I do not continuously increase the load, I increase the load to pressure P, stop the test, go to the specimen and look at the crack and these cracks are labeled as isostatics. Not only I do I notice the cracks, but I also draw the boundary of the crack. So, it is connecting all the ends of the crack as a contour and these contours are also named separately. You have those contours as isoentatic. So, what you have here is you apply the load, go and look at the formation of cracks, mark the boundary, then come back and increase the load. So, you will do the loading intermittently, in between you have to go inspect the cracks and if you look at there are many methods developed how to identify the cracks, you should not escape attention of cracks on the structure. 
so you have to inspect the complete uh, structure there are recommendation that you should do it this uh, in 5 minutes time because you know you are having a coating the coating should not creep so you can maintain the load at the given pressure go quickly mark the crack come back and repeat the load repeat the experiment so what i'll do is i'll increase the load i'll increase the pressure that's what you will see here so what you find is the pressure is increased you have second set of cracks formed and we'll de see this very closely now so what you find here is i have increased the pressure so for each one of this end of cracks i note a different color and at this stage if you are very careful you would also see there are cracks perpendicular to the original cracks also have appeared and i also mark a iso enthetic around them so the whole experiment is little different in brittle coating what i do is i look at the structure for a given load incrementally raise the load in stages after raising the load you stop it hold it go and look at the cracks identify the ends of the crack and then repeat the next stage and so on and so forth that's how you do it that's how you do the experiment and what is important here is this is available at a particular pressure p in this case this is at a pressure p p dash which is greater than the original p so at increasing pressures you get more and more contours and if i want to find out quantitatively the information i need to do it for two different loads and then find out the numbers and i also caution as experimentalists people develop methodologies to extract my recommendation for using brittle coating is to find out the principal stress direction it's very simple the moment you get the cracks the cracks indicate the principal stress direction the tangent to the crack is nothing but the principal stress direction because you have a brittle material and brittle material has failed why it got separated it has reached its uh, threshold strain and the whole thing got separated and this naturally gives you the principal stress direction but if you want to find out even the magnitude of the stresses developed then you need iso enthetics and then do the processing and if you really look at those equations a very long winding so when you want to look at brittle coating what you will have to look at is these iso enthetic patterns you have to mark it you have to use these patterns to find out uh, the quantitative value of stresses on the other hand if i combine brittle coating and strain gauges i have a lot of advantage the advantage what i have is i know the principal stress direction from the isostatics so i can align the strain gauge appropriately on an actual test component normally on a free surface you require three strain gauges to be mounted because you want to find out three components of strain tensor if i know the principal stress direction i can reduce one strain gauge per point it's a great saving and when you are really looking at analysis on a aircraft structure or any one of the realistic structures you may want to handle 1000 channels 2000 channels so in that you can increase the number of points by reducing number of channels per point because each strain gauge occupies a channel so in large scale problem you combine strain gauges and brittle coatings appropriately and this material is also little different you incrementally load the structure at each level of the load you identify the outer boundary of the cracks you call them as isoenthetic and if you look at the equations they are mind boggling and you also make certain approximations in the processing of the results so the idea is use brittle coating more for finding out the principal stress direction rather than finding out the magnitudes so that's what we have looked at it the principal stress direction at a point of interest is tangential to the crack at that point 
and what is the level of accuracy? The accuracy of the test is dictated by failure strain of the coating decides the minimum strain that the technique can detect. And another thing you will have to keep in mind in all the coating techniques, in all the coating techniques what you find is in all you will have Poisson ratio. The Poisson ratio mismatch is a nuisance in all the coating techniques, because one of the assumptions what we do is I have a prototype and I have a coating on it and we feel we assume that whatever the strain of the prototype is faithfully transferred to the coating. You will have a coating with different elastic properties, the specimen will have nu s as the Poisson ratio, the coating will have nu c as the Poisson ratio. You can understand if it is stretched, you can understand you are applying the load and then the both the coating and the specimens stretch uniformly. On the transverse direction, Poisson ratio plays a nuisance value. So, this you will have to live with in all the coating te technique in experimental mechanics. What you will finally, say is the Poisson ratio effects are minimal, it could be neglected or you bring in a correction factor, you have to handle this very carefully. So, Poisson ratio mismatch is a nuisance, that is why he said experiment gives you information closer to truth. In some cases you will also have to swallow a few minor issues which we are not in a position to solve. And what is the level of strain that this can give? It is of the order of 300 to 500 micro strain and as technology advances we are able to get coating which lower and lower strain, but it is around this region. But you know experimentalists have not stopped like this, you know once you find that there is a limitation they have also developed methodology where they use refrigeration to reveal regions where you have strains below and develop the cracks. So, if you get into the technique there are there are ways to circumvent some of these issues. And another very important aspect of this is we are very much concerned about the environment and here the whatever the material that is used for metal coatings you need to have protective gear you know it is not uh, healthy for humans to breathe. And not only this the failure behavior of the coating strongly depends on the environment whatever is the humidity and temperature dictates how the coating is to going to behave. That means, the failure strain will change if the ambient temperature changes, if the humidity changes because you are going to apply brittle coating in the field, you are not going to apply brittle coating inside the comfort of your laboratory. Inside the comfort of the laboratory you can control everything, you can control the humidity, you can control the temperature, you can have dust free environment, but brittle coating is a very industry friendly technique, it is used in the field and it gives a very valuable information in large structures where you want to identify zones of importance for further study that is the way you have to look at it. You have to use this technique more to identify zones of importance that needs further attention. Then you use either photoelastic coating or uh, you can also use uh, brittle coat, uh, uh, strain gauges and make finer measurements. The technique is suitable for solving large scale problem which I have said and it is to be used in conjunction with strain gauge and that is the way the technique has an edge when we want to use it in real practice. In this lecture we have looked at physical principle behind the brittle coating technique. The methodology to perform brittle coating experimental technique is also briefly explained. Brittle coating is an ideal approach to identify zones where you have to concentrate for further investigation. And if you look at combination of brittle coating and strain gauges makes the stress analysis lot more accurate and fast, because in a large structure 
you do not know a priori which are the zones that needs further attention, which could be identified by brittle coating, followed by a strain gauge technique can give you accurate numbers in zones of importance. Thank you.